Good afternoon, follow your brushers. This is Pam with Follow Your Brush. Uh, I appreciate all of you who have liked and subscribed and are following along with my adventures. And today I have a new one for you. This is what a paint diary. Now why in the world would I want that? I always swatch my colors when I get them, when I buy new paint. I must admit, I am a paint addict. I have all colors and brands and um, I enjoy it and I do use them. The ones that I am working with today to show you in this paint diary, let me show you the cover of it first, what it looks like. I just have wet my paints to let them kind of sit up a little bit, so we'll wait a second. This is what it looks like. It's called a painter's color diary where you can title your sheet, what the brand is, you can test the transparency, um, how they work, how they goes from dark to light, the different hues, you can mix colors. And I've really been enjoying learning to do that. I'm gonna soak up some of this. It's a little bit too wet. I've been enjoying mixing my colors and learning color mixing. I told you the other day, if you followed me, that um, I bought this, purchased this book, The Art of the Limited Palette by Hazel Sohn, I believe her name is. That's the way I pronounce it. And this is a watercolor guide to help you in watercolor mixing. It talks about from the basic palette and all the different ways that you can use your blues, your cool colors, the effects of temperature warms and cools, and the longer I'm painting, here's a nice, beautiful swatching chart that she put together. The longer I'm in this, I discover um, how much more I need to know. <laughs> so you might be in the same boat that I am. I just, um, I need more information um, what I'm doing in order to do it effectively. The colors that I'm using today are Core, Q-O-R, Core Watercolors. They, ah, oh, you can see right there, they swish. Let me add some water so you can see how this goes. They're, they have a, I believe it's an Aquasol binder. It's a little different than, um, I'll have to double check on that. I might be wrong. I have been known to make mistakes, believe it or not. But I like the way they swish with the water. This particular color that I just put on there is um, Pyrrole Orange. We have a yellow, Quin Gold. This one, I can't even, it says Dairy what? Dairy Yide Yellow. I'm not sure. Okay. I, I, what I am sure of is that I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. <laughs> And my next one was a uh, pyrrole orange. I'm gonna go ahead and wet this ahead of time. So you can see how it, it likes to run. I'll get the hang of this. But the reason I purchased this book is because um, I do have so many different paints. Oh, look at that. See how it runs with the water? I love this that. I love that. Look at it go. Now these are not granulating colors. Um, but they have this what a lot of watercolor artists call the swoosh factor. They just will run beautifully. So when you're using them and I'll, I'll do some uh, on a painting here in a minute to show you what I'm talking about. They, they love to just run, and these are great for if you're channeling your paint. By that, I mean uh, permanent alizarin crimson. Look at that. Watercolor will only go where the, the watercolor paint will only go where the water has gone. So that's why it's fun for me just to let it go and do its thing. 
That's what it likes to do. And that's how it works best, is if you're actually not being stingy, stingy with your water. My favorite color here, Coin Magenta, one of my favorites. This has been named, oh, I'm running into the other one. Quinn Magenta has been named as the uh, fashion color for 2023. And I must agree. Look how that runs. I'm going to move it this way because I'm running into my other colors. I'll do a painting for you here in a second, just wet on wet to show you how it runs. All right, I'm going to wet this one. And we're less likely to run into my other square. And this next one is Cerulean Blue. This is nice for sky colors. And see how that swishes and moves around. I love that. Next we have Dioxazine Purple. Forgot to wet it ahead of time. Sorry about that. So now you get to see what it does when I add the water. There we go. I'll get the hang of this. Just give me a few here. Dioxazine purple. I'm finding my purples and my greens make a nice, um, they make a nice neutral color. And that's another thing I'm learning to appreciate. This next one is, try to keep it away from my purple. This next one I'm gonna do here for you is ultramarine blue. Oh no, I'm sorry, phalo blue. Phalo blue green shade. And you can see that swishing across the page. These are great if you want to just, if you're doing a painting that you just want to let it run and do its thing. Core is great for wet on wet. It really likes to show off. All right, now we're into French, or no, ultramarine blue. It's not French ultramarine, just ultramarine blue. And let's let her run. See, I could sit and watch paint dry all day. I don't know about you. <laughs> but I sure could. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, let me do it. Get to the next one because I want to do these quickly because I do want to try to do a little, show you how it works wet on wet. An actual piece of paper. So I think I'm gonna enjoy having this painter color diary so that I have all of my, at my hand, at my disposable, my disposal, the, um, the different companies and brands that I have, and this way I can explore them and have it all in one book. So if, if I'm wanting to do something in particular, I can refer back to this and know where I can find that color. I love that one. That is um, Cobalt Teal. Beautiful, beautiful shade. Beautiful shade. Okay, this next one I'm gonna do is Green Gold, another fun color for landscapes and trees. And you can see how this runs as well. These dark lines here show the opacity so uh, and the transparency. So if that line is showing through, then you know this, this particular line here that shows you the transparency of that color. My next one that I'm gonna do here, whoops, I didn't get that clean, did I? Sorry about that. Let me dab that off. I kinda, 
sort of, kind of going to ruin my swatch. Okay, let me try again. Make sure it's clean. Okay, sorry about that. My next one is raw umber. There you go. Can you see that? It's a nice landscape color. Let's go back to the tippy top here. This particular set of core has uh Eighteen colors. This is a Van Dyke brown, another really pretty color. If you like landscaping, landscape colors, it's another pretty one. Uh, I'm sorry, it's burnt sienna. This next one is Van Dyke brown, a little different. Can see the difference there and let me let her run so this is core core is a product of golden company and um, they have great great products not just the core paints they have other products as well and then my last one i'm going to do here is neutral tint i believe this one kind of has a bit of a blue shade and i don't really know i'm just going by appearance it's a neutral tint so this book i believe is it a necessity no probably not if you're more organized than i then you can probably keep track of your colors and your own make your own swatch book i do like to um keep track of my different colors and this will help me. I'm gonna show you something that I think is really neat though. I'm gonna do a little blend here. I'm gonna blend my ultramarine, whoops, there we go, and my, see how this works, and my green gold Let's see what we get. That's pretty. Let me get some more blue on here. Because I think, yeah, here we go. Get a really pretty turquoise color when you mix these two colors. I like that. That's that's a nice um, shade. If you're doing landscaping. Shall we try another one? Let's do, since we're into this ultramarine blue, and put that there. And I'm gonna add some, some of the yellow, see what we get. So this is why I've been enjoying this book on color mixing. Um, it's just really helping me to have an idea of what I want to use if I don't have it readily available already for me in a palette. I think it's important to learn how to do these. I put that one wet on dry, so it's not going as well. Pretty. Let's try some. I mean, what this ahead of time? I didn't forget to do it. Let's see what we can do to make our own an orange here. Woo! There it goes, swishing everywhere. Loves the water. This paint loves the water. It's like, don't paint with me if you're not going to use a lot of water. In fact, that has too much water. <laughs> I'm just going to let it spread on over into here. But um, that's really pretty. That's pretty. That's a pretty shade. 
Okay, enough of that. You've seen me, my first page in my painter's watercolor diary. So I still have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 that I can play with here. And I have another, some other colors I'll probably put there. But let me show you quickly, well, if you're still watching, let's use this on some paper and watch what it does wet on wet. Uh, this is a piece of indigo, handmade, 140 pound. It's kind of a rough texture. Gonna spritz this. Come down this way a little bit, maybe. And let's play, shall we? I'm gonna come in with a nice, um, I'm gonna use this magenta. See how that runs and gives you beautiful, beautiful runs. It's just gonna come down into this water I might as well fill up the whole page. Wasn't really gonna do that, but this will be a nice backwash page. It's kind of puffing up because I don't have it taped down or anything. And this is, like I say, this is handmade paper by Indigo. Beautiful paper to work with. To me, it's almost like working on a canvas with the textures that I get. But there you go, there's some just a backwash of that. And then let me come back into it with some purple. This might be some little flowers or something in out in the springtime, maybe. See how it spreads so beautifully? That's one of the characteristics of core. And I believe we could make this into a center of a flower, perhaps. I'm just going to add one more, and that's it. I read in my design book that the human mind can really only handle about five, five shapes the same. <laughs> because we want to... Um, we read that as one shape. Did you know that? Let's give it some petals. Now I know it's still wet. But I'm gonna do this anyway. I'm just gonna have some petals coming out of that center. Just so you can have an idea of how this core paint works. I'm just pushing my brush down a little bit. Paper's damp, it's not totally dry. It's another thing about this handmade paper. It will, um, it'll stay damp for a while. So here's another little flower peeking out. And let's do some here, too. I think these are kind of overlapping, so I'm going to kind of come down here with this one. And let's get in here with that one. If I have more time to develop this as the day goes by, which I probably, I probably will, I can let it dry and then drop in more colors this one's kind of hiding between the others and you see as they dry they dry lighter you see that I talk about that all the time that's what watercolor likes to do and this paper being handmade, 100% cotton, it really soaks it up. So 
that's just a little example for you. Shall we give it some stems while we're at it? I'm gonna go in with some of this green gold and just drip it down. Just like we're gonna put these, put these stems. There's no rhyme or reason to this, really. I'm just. Um, Mainly wanted to show you how it runs and how it runs in place. I can soften some of these edges. All right, I'm going to get carried away. I need to stop. But um, thanks for watching. Follow your brush, Pam would follow your brush if you're still watching. Like and subscribe if you wish to follow my journey with me. Um, I don't sell anything, I'm not promoting any one person or product. I'm just sharing my journey with you, with others who might be also journeying to, to, with watercolor so we can just kind of play and have a good time. It's kind of good that kind of fun that direction too, isn't it? Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you wish. And um, I'll see you next week. Follow your brush. Have a great week.